I just got my bees out of the pan handle yesterday and from that I didn't make any splits I had to take one hive into another or like combine one hive two hives into one uh, I was planning on making some splits but nonetheless I've been splitting from some swarms I've caught and some hives that people have given me recently in the backyard while I had bees out collecting Tupelo and now that I'm home and we're basically getting into a dearth and the way I know that is I've got um, all the high, all the leftover basically frames from extracting my tupelo. They're all in the backyard right now, and they're being devoured by bees. Probably my bees, maybe local bees. I'm not really sure, but I didn't see anybody's brand on them, so I couldn't tell you who they were. But there's, we're getting into a dearth. So what I need to do is start feeding and trying to, you know, keep my population growing throughout the summer so I can make some splits going into the fall or going into Brazilian pepper. I might, I might do it before Brazilian pepper, but. <clears throat> so here's a quick video I'm gonna make about, here's a quick video about putting together some feeder rims and I'll tell you why I'm doing this. So I just got back from the panhandle, just collected my bees yesterday. Um, yesterday? No, two days ago extracted yesterday left all the uh, well this morning I put out all the frames of empty comb so the bees could clean those up I did the same thing after orange blossom and I had maybe two bees come by now after orange blossom we're in March and so there's a lot blooming in Florida or Florida's where I'm at uh, there's a lot blooming during that time so the bees don't need what I have to give them they're going to, they'd rather get the nectar from the flowers right they don't want the honey so um, right now you can tell we're in a dearth because these bees are just devouring the honey that's, out, that's outside the back of the house right now. And I'll go show it to you in a second. But the main purpose of this video is to show you how I make my feeder rims. Um, I'm using, I made some, some lids. I'll grab one right now. That's complete. I'm doing it two different ways. Um, this, this is HDO plywood. I got it from the hardware store locally. It wasn't cheap. I only bought five sheets of it, and I cut about, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know the exact number, but let's say I cut 50, 40 or 50 uh, 10 frame lids, and then I have about, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 nucleus colony size lids. And then I had a bunch of scrap left over, and what I'm using the scrap for is to make these heater rims. So this is just a three quarter by three quarter. I'm doing it like that uh, because it's easier. I don't have to do an extra cut. I could have cut it down a little th thinner, maybe taking it down to like four, well, like three eighths or five eighths, just to have give that enough room to put a uh, put some pollen patty or put a pollen patty in there, and therefore you don't get a lot of propolis built up or not, they're not building extra comb up there. But I don't really care if they build extra comb up there. It's not that big a deal. I can scrape it down. Um, my main reason I, I just need these rims in there so I can start feeding because like I said we're going into a dirt so what I'm doing is just running down through a table saw I've got over there uh, three-quarter inch just leftover sheets of this HDO so I'll just run a bunch of three-quarter inch strips that are uh, let's just say 20 inches long they're actually 19 and 15 16 I think actually something like that and then going across this middle bar right here is about 14 and a half roughly but what I did is I just got a hive body here's a medium super and I'm just I measured you know the width of it and I cut accordingly and then I'm just tacking I don't think I've tacked anything together yet using this Brad nailer stapler I've got some uh, staples in them there. Ooh, these are not the ones I want to be using. I'm going to have to go get some different ones. I'm using these thin staples like that. And... I just ran out of staples a minute ago. I switched it and I noticed that a couple of them didn't go all the way in. And now I know why. I wasn't paying attention to the staples I grabbed. What staples I'm holding together with are an inch long. So this is three quarters. We got about a quarter inch going in there, tacking it to the other side. But I'm just stapling them together, 
just once in the side here, once in the side here, once in the side here, once in the side here. And on the top, I'll just do typically one, two, three, four on the long side and three on the short side. So I'll show you. I'll put a full one together right now. This isn't completely necessary. You can just go straight to your lid and tack them down on the lid, but I do it just to start. I want to start it as, a, as, as close to a rectangle as I can get it. So that's that. And then I will go the extra step and tack one. Oh, I can use that here. Basically all I'm doing here, these lids that I build, I build them with a little extra bit of rim over the front and the back. So when this, see if you can see this maybe, when this is on, I just kind of eyeball it actually. I just, with my fingers, I feel it's like about 3 sixteenths. That's probably closer to an eight, but close to 3 sixteenths extra on the outside. And then in the front and the back, there's roughly, this is probably 3 eighths in the front. It's probably a quarter in the back. So I just have a little bit of lip hanging over the top, I guess for rain. But that was the measurement I, I cut, so that's what I've got to work with. So I, like I said, I just eyeball it. I'll do, I'll start them to begin with. Just one there. One there. Flip it around. Again, just with my fingers, kind of feel that each, I've got an even space on each side. Nothing scientific to it. Keep in mind, these things live in trees. That aren't perfect. So, there's a feeder rim. Now, this is HDO plywood. And HDO plywood is supposed to have glue running all the way through it. It's supposed to no, not be any holes or anything. But, that right there is a little hole. It does not come through to the inside. However, this one does. So the bees, it's just a little eighth inch hole. They'll fill it with propolis, no big deal. But here is a HDO plywood lid with a feeder rim. And doing the math on all this stuff, these tops cost me, I think like $6 for a lid after I, you know, I did the maintenance. I, I cut everything and, you know, drug it home and all that stuff. So this, this lid cost me $6. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the bees, and we'll get out of here today. Thanks for watching. Um, got any comments or questions, leave those. Leave those. Golly, I can't talk. It's been a rough couple days. I, I, um, I was exhausted messing with my bees the other day and extracting yesterday. It's just been nonstop. But um, thanks for watching. Appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Leave those down below. And like and subscribe. And I'll, I'll go show you the bees, but we'll see you next time. Check this out. They're just, <laughs> they're devouring this. I just pulled that frame out um, a second ago because I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, I'm sorry, bee. That was the 10th frame in this box. And some of, I, I have them in the uh, groves or in the pant and the, uh, panhandle for Tupelo has nine config nine frame configurations so the bees can draw the wax out deeper but when I put them out outside here I just put them outside 
in a 10 frame configuration on some of the boxes and some of the wax is just way too wide like you see how wide, how wide that is so the bees weren't able to get everything so i kind of separated things apart for them so they could get down in there Let's see if we can see some bees in there it's been down there doing some good work there she is she's all happy but look at them just cleaning house here So like I said, after an orange blossom in March, they could care less about this. I put them out here yesterday and they just started coming in droves. So this is how I clean all my frames up. And I'll leave you with that. I'll see you next time. I guess on the, on the way out, we'll see what the chickens are doing. Bird. Bird. Pepper right there. Pepper likes to climb on my shoulder. What's this? Let's see if she'll get up here. Come on. That's Pepper. She likes to get up there and just kind of, she'll dig through my hair sometimes. Bird, and she does this whining noise. Listen to her. If you could hear that, but she does this like whining noise. She runs. She walks by the. She walks by the doors and the uh, windows of the house, and you can always tell that she's out there because you'll hear a whine. But if it was this bird, you'd hear monster noises. This is Crystal. All right, birds. Have a good day. Oh, we gotta get Pepper off.